Chicago rapper who was gunned down here on one of Chicago's ritziest street. They say two other people were also shot when four gunmen, witnesses say, jumped out of cars and fired from just a few feet away. It's an act of violence that took place on an August day in the Gold Coast against a Chicago rapper. And then it was promoted and bragged about on social media. And the feds say it was because of that that helped them make this case. And it's me. Think about it. It's me. This is duck we talking about. One of my ops see me, they ass gonna squeeze. Cause they wanna kill me so fucking bad. So fucking bad. Carlton Weekly was born December 6, 1993 in Chicago, Illinois. Carlton grew up on the South Side in an area known as the Low End. Raised in Ida B. Wells to be exact, it was called the Low End because it was the area where all the low-income projects were located. He had a huge family with cousins and relatives all over the East, South, and West Side of Chicago. Although this can be a blessing, in a city like this, that means even relatives can become ops depending where they reside. That's how seriously the gang war in Chicago is taken by those who are involved. When he was three years old, his father was convicted and sentenced to 24 years behind bars. He would spend his childhood living with his mom and siblings at their grandmother's home on 63rd and St. Lawrence. Sometimes there was as many as 15 people living with her. His grandma was nicknamed the queen of the low end because of this, and whenever she relocated, the whole family would follow. With his dad behind bars, Carlton said it made him mature faster and taught him to take responsibility early on. His mom gave him the nickname Chunky Duck as a child because of his size, and it ended up sticking. I ain't bigger than that, man. It's enough said, bro. Feel me? Hey, let me get some of this shit done, man. Let me let, let, me let this little nigga know how it is. As Duck turned from a child to a teenager, he took a liking to the street life in Chicago. For someone with such a large family, he had connections with just about everyone. The neighborhood Duck was from would eventually start their own set, called STLEVT, to which he would join. Initially, he and his friends were known for being big potheads who occasionally robbed small-time drug dealers and did home invasions. Before he ever picked up a gun, he was known to be a good fighter, and he was bigger than most kids his age. Duck used to go to Parkway Gardens or Wick City to fight, and was rumored to have never lost. He was that good. Eventually, the fighting wouldn't suffice as the war between the BDs and GDs was only getting worse, and Duck was growing up in the middle of it. He would bring a lot of guys from other sets around who would later join STL, and he was becoming a well-known member. Around this time, Duck was becoming really close friends with a guy named Shondale, or Tuka as some know him. In January of 2011, Tuka was shot and killed at a bus stop, which turned Duck's heart cold. He was just with him, and now he was gone. You know, when you meet a motherfucker and you real close to him, then if y'all click, then y'all click, you feel me? And me and him click, like, that was one of my real close friends, like, every day, like, spend the night at his house. You know? I don't know who to trust. By now, Duck was fully engulfed in the streets and he had no intentions of taking any other path in life. While this is happening, a guy named Billionaire Black started coming around STLEBT and he too became good friends with Duck. Billionaire Black was an aspiring rapper who knew a lot about the industry and he encouraged Duck to start rapping since he had been talking about it and freestyling for years. At the time, STLEBT had multiple offsets who were all getting recognition in the Chicago drill scene. As we know it, they often use music as a way to not only talk about the war, but throw disses as well. With some of them even getting nationwide exposure, Duck wanted to become the voice of his set, and that's what he did. He and a few others would form their group, Flyboy Gang, or FBG, because they thought they were the flyest guys in school. It would also later be referred to as the Clout Boys, and Duck sometimes would be called Big Clout, but for the most part, he birthed FBG Duck here. All these ops steady hate saying what they gon' do They sneak dissing on these songs but they never ever He started recording his first songs and releasing them in early 2011 But he was still heavy in the streets Duck was still shooting, robbing, beating people up and selling drugs He became a huge target after releasing his Duck Freestyle on August 11 The reason this was a big deal was because a man named O.D. Perry from Wick City was just shot to death hours before he dropped the song this made Oblock furious, and he became a target. Although this may have seemed like negative attention, it jump-started his rap career, 
as the song gained a few hundred thousand plays. He continued to release songs constantly and his name only got bigger from there. Duck always had a crowd of friends that also rap, and he would put them on throughout his career. He wanted everyone to win. He was slowly becoming the biggest rapper the Gangster Disciples ever had, along with Lil Jojo. But Jojo was murdered in 2012, so Duck made it a point to keep his legacy alive and put on for the GDs. With this type of reputation came a lot of responsibility. Duck was really the breadwinner, and it was up to him to supply his side with guns and resources to make sure everyone around him was good. He was leading the BDK movement which made him a really big target to Oblox, 600, and other sets who wanted him gone. He was carrying the entire block on his back. Because it's no secret these sets wanted Duck dead, he would have a few near-death experiences throughout his career. In June of 2013, he was shot in his calf, and again shortly after, shot in the ankle. He was even stabbed in the stomach by his ex-girlfriend at one point. This didn't phase him though, and he continued the BDK movement despite both sides losing countless members. Duck was actually known to be a shooter, although it's not confirmed he's actually killed anyone. He shot and wounded multiple people, including Oblox T-Roy, who was best friends with King Von. Eventually, Duck's music career was doing so well that he didn't even have enough time to be in the streets as much as before. He was still being blackballed as other rappers didn't want to collab with people like Duck. Because if they did, they would probably be cutting ties with all his ops, such as Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and the 600 rappers, who were much more mainstream. But he was still making noise and doing big numbers online. In 2017, his life changed forever after seeing his brother and cousin shot dead on the scene. He immediately broke down in tears with his mom and sister. He was angry and really wanted to avenge them, but his mother convinced him to get revenge through his music, not the streets. Duck released the song Slide shortly after, which would become his biggest to date with over 50 million plays. The song is considered one of the biggest drill hits of all time and really gave Duck the recognition he deserved after almost a decade of music. 21 Savage would hop on the remix and is one of the only mainstream artists to collab with him. After this, he signed a record deal worth around $2 million. He essentially made GD history as he was touching the same type of money Vaughn, Keefe, and Dirk had. Some have rumored that Duck tried to stop the war, but it's unknown if it's true or not. He did however release songs like Chicago Legends in 2019, where he honored legends from both his side and the other side, something that takes a lot of humility to do. Unfortunately, he was already in too deep, and the target on his back too large. <laughs> On August 4th, 2020, Duck set out to the Gold Coast of Chicago, an area that's known for its high-end luxury stores. It was broad daylight, and he was shopping for his son whose birthday was coming up. Duck and his girlfriend were seen by fans inside the store, to where he realized he needed to leave before his location was leaked. They went into the Dulce & Gabbana store to avoid conflict and waited. He purchased an expensive shirt and a pair of socks for his son's birthday. And with people recognizing him still, he asked the store clerk if he could leave out the back. The worker told him no due to the merchandise being in the back of the store. Given no choice, after about 10 minutes, they thought it was safe to come out. The Gold Coast was not a place where crime, especially murder, was heard of. As Duck and his girlfriend exited the store, two cars pulled up next to him and opened fire. Duck tried to shoot back, but his gun jammed. He fell to the street floor where he was shot around 15 times. He would pass away later that night, just two days before his dad was set to be free from his 24-year sentence. Oblox celebrated while STLEBT mourned the loss of Duck. A dozen cop cars parked on King Drive that night in an attempt to avoid retaliation from the GDs. Posters even went up around the city warning people to stay inside. That's how impactful Duck was in the community. Almost a year later, five people were found to take part in his murder, but only four were arrested after one took his own life. If convicted, they face a minimum of life in prison and the possibility of the death penalty. A lot of people question why Duck wouldn't move out of Chicago after signing his multi-million dollar deal like the other rappers did. He answered this by stating too many people in Chicago relied on him for him to get up and leave, but this ultimately cost him his life. There's no question Duck's legacy will live on with his music, and when speaking from legends from Chicago, he deserves to be remembered. So he stayed, and he still made a way. But it was happening. It was finna happen. It was finna happen. 
and then he was murdered in broad daylight in the most safest, prestigious place in Chicago.